Welcome to the Strong for Performance podcast, where we give coaches and consultants practical ideas for taking you to the next level in your business and in your life. I'm your host, Meredith Bell. I interview experts who've walked in your shoes and offer real world experience that you can apply to your own journey. Welcome to another episode of the Strong for Performance podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Bell, and today I'm really excited to have with me Sam Hutchinson. Hello. Sam, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm, I'm delighted to have Sam. I need to give a little bit of background because Sam and I met on LinkedIn, and he stood out because he sent me a personalized video welcoming me to his network. And Sam, I'll never forget that because, you know, almost no one does that. So I knew immediately I wanted to get to know you. And then in our conversation, it was clear to me that Sam has some excellent information to uh, share with my listeners, coaches, consultants, and experts, which is uh, the group that Sam focuses on in his business. He's the founder of Hutchinson Marketing based in the UK. And interestingly, his clients are in the US and Canada uh, because he finds our country and Canada more, um, I guess, progressive. Is that fair to say, Sam? Yeah, I would just say more entrepreneurial. Um, I just find working with Americans just more more of a pleasure for some reason. I don't know why. I find um, people in the UK a bit more resistant, a little bit more skeptical in general when it comes to business. Um, so I've always enjoyed working with uh, people in the US. So. Oh, that's great. And what Sam focuses on in his work with coaches and consultants and experts is helping them set up and build a business that really produces profitable results fast. And I know that's of interest to all of our listeners. And so I want to jump right in, Sam, because you have so much great uh, content to share with our listeners. First, mm-hmm. though, give us the context. Tell us a little bit about your own journey to becoming mm-hmm. a coach and how you started doing the work that you're doing today. Okay. Well, you know, it's quite a long story, but I, I worked in, in media for a long time. So I was in the media industry uh, in London for around 10 years. So, the, so most of my career I've worked in, uh, you know, for national newspapers and, and uh, business magazines, working in advertising, that kind of thing. Um, I over time I started moving into the digital advertising side of things so working for agencies in, in London um, so I slowly moved towards the digital um, kind of world if you like and I was always kind of a bit obsessed with the internet and was playing around with things and, and doing a lot of research at that time um, and it got to the point in my career really where I, I just really felt burnt out with corporate I just really didn't see myself being in corporate long term I wasn't interested in climbing the corporate ladder and you know, I've got friends who are very successful in media and I watched, I saw what they had to do to, to mm. get up and it was just so many hours and all that stuff. So I was attracted by the internet for that reason, I suppose. Um, and I tried many different things, um, you know, to, 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 to kind of make, uh, make some um, moves in, 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 in that world. And it was very difficult to start with. Um, but then I suffered with severe back problems, um, really bad, uh, terrible lower back problems. So I ended up being pushed out of work really because of that. And had to kind of learn how to do it for myself. So I tried many different things, um, and I'm really self-taught. Really, everything I've done, I've kind of taught myself, um, and got into coaching really based on years of, of failure, but yeah, also making lots of other successful uh, things happen as well. So um, I've been coaching probably for about five, just over five years now, um, in many different areas, mostly digital marketing, that kind of that kind of arena. Um, And I've been doing what I'm doing now as it is now for a couple of years now, uh, which I'm sure we're going to talk about uh, Mm -hmm. as well. So, Well, I know at one point when you and I spoke before, you were struggling uh, Mm. in your business and it it took a while for you to really kind of figure out how to make it all work together. Talk a little Mm. bit about that part because it's very relevant to some of our listeners who may have gone through or are going through that kind of struggle themselves. Yeah, I think the problem is there's so many things to learn. There's so many um, pieces to the puzzle um, when it comes to having a successful online business. Um, So even if you've got a bricks and mortar physical business and you're trying to use the internet to create new business, 
And there are so many facets to that, so many things that come into it to make it work. And I think really the problem is, is that there's just so much information out there. There's so many conflicting uh, advice out there um, telling you that you need to be doing this or that. And I think people get very confused about which way to turn. Um, and I think really what I've tried to do um, is kind of, you know, throughout the mistakes I've made and the kind of routes I've gone down, I've tried to distill all of that, bring it all together and create a, a way of, um, of showing people how to focus on the right things and kind of stay away from the things that are going to waste time. So, of course, you've got the technology side of, uh, of the business, which is uh, always challenging for a lot of people. Um, but also the messaging and the marketing, the marketing messaging, which is very um, important, which is, I think is overlooked by a lot of people. Um, and they get very focused on the, the technology side of things rather than the actual positioning and the messaging and, um, you know, being very clear about what, what you do to solve the problem. Um, uh, and I actually did a, I, I did a video recently where I talked about messaging before marketing. So kind of reversing what most people are doing, mm -hmm. focusing on that, that one liner, you know, that, you know, that elevator pitch and really working, getting clear on that before you start getting into the, the technology and, the, and that side of it. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think a lot of it's just to do with too much information and overwhelm mm -hmm. a lot of people. Well, yes, because every time you turn around, there's one more new <laughs> gadget or yeah. approach that's supposedly the best thing. And one of the things I've really enjoyed about your work and, and learning what you do is the simplicity of yeah. it. Mm. You've really taken out the confusion. And I want to get more into that. But first, mm. there's an area that is just so critical. And I was so glad when you and I spoke that you identified that as huge, which is mindset. Yeah. So, so talk a little bit about the importance of that and how you work with clients in that area beyond what you mm. do for them in terms of your service. But that piece is so critical. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, I think, I think coaching, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of niche you're in with coaching. Um, if you're working with people to help them develop themselves or, or solve a problem, then obviously mindset comes into every, every area of that in, in life, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and I think especially in business, when you're starting in business or starting out to be a coach for the first time, then a lot, I think a lot of coaches that I speak to seem to have a bit of an issue around the business, seeing their coaching business as a business, you know, and they have a bit of a, a, you know, a few hangups around, you know, sales and marketing and being coming across like you're being pushy. And I think people kind of tend to veer away from that and they get um, a little bit hung up on that. Um, and that's the problem is that they, they're kind of treating their business like a hobby in a lot of cases. Um, and that's usually coming from a good place because they want to genuinely help people. I mean, we are coaches because we want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, but also, obviously, it's important to be able to treat your business like a business because without, without that, you, don't, you haven't got the ability to bring in new clients and help people. Um, so I think the mindset piece really for all business owners at every level, doesn't matter how successful you are, we're all human beings. So, you know, obviously there are things that come up, uh, you know, throughout the journey that, 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 you know, that can hold you back throughout that process. And, you know, I think my, my, my kind of role within my coaching program really is the mindset side more than anything. Um, I have a team of people to work on the technology and the messaging and that kind of stuff. So I am involved with that to some degree, but really my job, I see myself, my, my role in this is to keep people thinking in the right way and um, seeing things a little bit differently. Um, you know, I've got, I've got clients at the moment who have got a real problem with, with the sales side and they don't want to come across pushy and all that sort of thing. Um, so I'm, I'm working closely with these guys to make them see that actually, unless you do change your mindset around that and see things differently, you're going to struggle to be able to help more people because ultimately you can't bring in new clients. So mindset is so crucial. Uh, well, I'm curious, Sam, when you're talking about that, I know that you stress with your clients to emphasize the transformation they help their own clients get. Yeah. But I'm curious, what have you found to be effective in terms of things you say or you help them see with their own mindset so they experience their own transformation mm. in these areas where they've struggled in the past yeah well i mean i i do use myself as an example a lot of the time because i'm i'm the, I'm the typical person that's gone through this process myself i'm still working on my mindset i've got coaches that i work with so i'm always using myself as an example 
and also using other people that we're working with as, as an example. But we, but we also have specific books that we, that we, that we recommend people read. Um, and we also create content inside a members area, which is also driven uh, based around mindset as well. Um, but it's really just asking questions. A lot of it's based around questioning and, and making them work out themselves what, you know, what's missing and why they need to change what they, do, what they think, how they think. Um, and it's not really about telling someone to think differently. That's not going to help them. Um, I think it's about asking them the right questions at the right time to get them to realize that actually if you see something like this, if you see it a little bit differently, it actually opens up more opportunity and, and things are get, get easier. Um, but, you know, everyone's an individual. Everyone's different. So the way we, we work with people is different person to person. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's something that we're working on continuously as we need to. Um, you know, when people come across roadblocks or they're slowing down, you know, we have this problem where people kind of lose momentum a little bit and they come across a problem and they might kind of disappear for a day or two. And we don't know where they've gone and they've gone quiet. So that's when I would then step in and kind of pull them back in and, and work out what it is that's kind of slowing them down. Ah. Um, and we can normally work out by, by asking these questions what it is that's really troubling them. You know, it could be, it could be a simple thing like they don't know how to do something from a technical side of thing, mm-hmm. it, they're uncomfortable on video. It could be a number of different things. Um, so it's constantly trying to work out what's slowing people down and keeping them on track. So we're always doing that continuously. That's just, it, it's so important because when we're in the middle of, you know, in the thick of it, it's often hard to see ourselves mm-hmm. where our issues are. And I know working with coaches myself, Um, being coached that it's just amazing how those targeted questions just cause Mm. you to go whoa (laughs) I hadn't thought of that and and so it helps you to see yourself I think in a different way and there was one particular thing in in um, some of the information you have about one question that you encourage them to ask themselves Mm. and also um, encourage their clients to ask themselves related to transforming their business. I'd love for you to share that question. I can't remember which question you mean. So oh, it was, um, it was the one thing that you were telling them, here is the question to ask yourself mm. when you want to really experience uh, a transformation or you really want your clients and it was it had to do with focusing on the client and yeah. what they need more yeah. than on themselves yeah I mean we focus a lot on on we talk a lot about you know transformation rather than information um, and this is a problem again that the kind of industry as a whole has houses that there's so much information that a lot of coaches get into into coaching and they think that they're able to sell a coaching program by really regurgitating information that, that anyone can really find out online if you do enough research. Um, so what we do is we try and help our clients separate themselves from the masses by simply focusing on their client very much, focusing on, on the transformation with their client. Um, because ultimately, if you are charging thousands of dollars for your services, uh, whatever they are, um, what those people are looking for when they exchange that money is they're looking to walk away with a transformation at the end of that. So that could be, you know, if you're a divorce coach, for example, you know, you, you might be helping them navigate that, that process. And the end result would be that they are much clearer, they, they, they've navigated their way through the divorce and they're in a happier place at the end of that. Um, I mean, for me, my, my, my transformation is helping them set up a business that, that, you know, that actually brings in regular clients and the right types of clients consistently. So um, we're always focusing very, or keeping them very much focused on transformation um, because the more you can help a person transform their life, the, the more success you have. Um, and it's not about the money. It's not actually about yourself and how much money you can earn and serving yourself. It's actually about uh, focusing purely on the client at all times. What, you know, what can I do to always improve uh, client results? Um, yeah, so we do a lot of work around, around that. Yeah, I would see that focus on results is so key as opposed to getting hung up on the process. Yeah. Of coaching. Yeah. Um, it, but I think you're right. I think too often, and this goes back to mindset, where we're so concerned with how we're coming across or yeah. what they're thinking of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And anytime the focus is on ourselves, we're more self conscious and we can't be as fully present 
for and with them yeah and therefore be as effective exactly yeah yeah so so i you know when we deal with clients we we really try and instill this into them is that you know when we when we when we're doing the avatar work and we're working out and getting very clear on who they're trying to target um, we start the process very early in getting them to think through the eyes of their customer. So we actually give their customer, their avatar names. We usually call women Sally. Uh, we call men John. Um, so that we actually start to visualize their avatar, their person that they're talking to. So that right from the beginning, everything they do, everything we do, all the content we create, everything we do moving forward is purely focused on, on, on Sally or John. Okay, mm -hmm. so they, we actually get them to write down on a piece of paper in front of them exactly what traits Sally's got. So who is Sally? How old is she? Where does she live? What does she like? All those things. And we, we make them put that in front of them. So they're constantly focusing on, the, on Sally because, um, and serving Sally and making sure that they are um, providing transformational results for her. And it's not about you. It's not about what you do and your results. It's about that, that individual. Mm -hmm. um, and by giving them a name and giving them an identity, it starts to really instill in their brain that, um, they are they're there to serve that person. That's um, great, and that helps with everything. So when you're doing the marketing, doing videos or content, you know, in the back of your mind, you've always got Sally there. So, mm -hmm. you know. well, and then if, especially with video or even with writing, that's one person you're speaking to, as opposed yeah. to this broad exactly audience yeah. that it, it can intimidate anybody well right. you know one of the other things that it links back to mindset is this idea of premium pricing because i know that you want to help your clients because you work with experienced coaches consultants and experts not someone who's just starting out and so one of the goals it seems that you have in your business is helping them elevate their own thinking about mm -hmm. their pricing yeah. And so talk a little bit about that whole idea of premium pricing. What kind of pushback do you get from people and how do you help them work through those objections they have? Mm, great question. That's a great question. Um, yeah. Pricing is something that we heavily focus on. Um, pricing we use with our front end marketing. We, we use pricing as a, as a, as a, um, as a topic on the front end of our marketing because uh, you know, there are many benefits uh, for coaches and, and consultants to focus on premium pricing. And, and there's a lot of people talking about high ticket and seven figures a year, all these big numbers. But there are, there are a couple of really big reasons why it works uh, from a business point of view. And uh, when it comes to pricing, the more you charge somebody, the more someone pays, the more money they pay for something, the more serious they are. So that's the number one thing, the more motivated they are. Um, and I use the analogy of, you know, if you bought a car for $1,000, you know, would you take care of it as much as if you spent $50,000 on a BMW? You'd probably clean that car far more. You'd look after it more because you've, you're financially invested into it. Mm -hmm. So, so, so we, you know, we, we talk about that a lot with, with our clients. Um, but also from, from a business point of view, if you are looking to build a, a sustainable, long-term, profitable coaching business, of course, you do need to be making a profit. And it's much more difficult to make a profit if you are, um, when you take into account costs like advertising, if you are undercharging for your services, um, especially if you're using things like Facebook to, to pay for traffic, then obviously there's a cost involved with that. So if you are charging $100 for your coaching or charging by the hour, it's virtually impossible to, to have a profitable business that way um, because cash flow is so low. Mm -hmm. um, so premium pricing is, is really, really important for so many reasons. And, and I suppose the number one reason is for the actual client themselves. Because like I say, when they've invested a certain amount of money, they, they just take it more seriously. They turn up on time, they're motivated, they're hungry to, to get results. So it really is a win-win for everybody. Um, it's, not, it's not doing an injustice to the client by saying it's $10,000. Actually, if you can deliver huge value, life-changing value, then $10,000 becomes a small amount of money. And it's a mindset we, we have. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a belief in our head that... Mm -hmm charging a lot of money, you know, people won't pay that or it's just ripping them off or whatever, it, or other stories you have in your head. Yes. Um, and we all have them and I, I definitely have them. I, mean, I started out coaching, I was charging around sort of six, between 600 and and $1,000 for some of the things I was doing. Um, and I'll give you an example of why, of, of, you know, exactly why it doesn't work. I, I launched a group coaching program about probably two years ago. Um, and I was targeting people in the, in the independent travel industry. So I, was, I, I identified there was a problem 
with those guys working from home as travel agents and they, their marketing, they were struggling with marketing in general. So I sold a group coaching program through a webinar to these guys. Um, and I think over a period of about three months, I got about 20, I think it was 22 people to sign up to my group coaching program. Um, they all paid, I think it was $697 for this program. And about three, well, three months into the program, at the end of the program, I think I probably had one or two of those still engaged with it. Um, and that's not because I wasn't turning up and delivering the value and giving them the, giving them the, what, you know, what they paid for. It's because they just weren't, they weren't serious enough about it. It wasn't a big enough invest, investment for them um, t- to take it seriously. Whereas if they'd paid me $5,000, they would have turned up a lot more. They would have done the work and they would have got results, better results. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's an example of, you know, undercharging for your services doesn't, doesn't serve anybody very well. So. Well, and I would think that the clients you work with and help work through that have probably been undercharging yeah. or not charging the premium prices. So what are some of the objections that they raise and how do you help them work through those? Right. Yeah, I mean, the main objection I think most people have is the, the obvious one, which is no, you know, people won't pay me that. People aren't going to pay me that sort of money. Um, and that is just a story they t- they, they're telling themselves. So we have that conversation and, you know, and we'll ask the question, why, why do you say that? What, what's that based on? What are you basing that on? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's normally, they'll normally say something like, well, I can see all the people in my industry, they're charging this or they're charging by the hour. So that's what I do. Um, so we talk about the fact that you can't base your business and your offering around what other people are charging. Right. Um, and even if you've got people in your industry who are more established, who have been around longer, um, and they're charging less than you, that doesn't mean you still couldn't charge more. It, it's all to do with how you position yourself, mm-hmm. uh, what value you've got to offer. Um, and a lot of it's just stories that we tell ourselves in our head, you know. And um, so, yeah, sometimes it is a bit of an issue when I say to them, you know, you need to be charging at least $3,000 for your services. Mm-hmm. There's quite a lot of resistance usually with that. Um, but it's usually around disbelief, belief, you know, believing people won't pay that. Right. Well, you were mentioning earlier, yes, that's so critical, the whole thing of stories. I'm so glad you help coaches see they tell themselves stories too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we all do. Sure. Um, but you also alluded earlier to another area that I know also from my 20 plus years of working with a, a number, hundreds of coaches and consultants, yeah. this whole area of selling. Yeah. is um, a challenge. Again, mm-hmm. it's that stories we tell ourselves about who salespeople are and being perceived as a salesperson. But you created what you refer to as natural selling. Yeah. And so talk a little bit about that and the kinds of questions that lend themselves to that process. Yeah, that's another great question. Um, so yeah, I mean, I learned natural selling um, from working in sales for a long time and moving from kind of um, consultancy type selling, long, long, long-winded sales, so that you know maybe taking three to six months to get a sale. So mm-hmm. coming from that kind of background where it's more consultancy than than it is about closing a sale. Um, but I once I started selling products online and I started generating leads online, that's when I really started to learn natural selling because it's a very different approach to meeting someone live at an event and then, ha- and then having a face-to-face meeting. That's a very different scenario to um, having someone approach you online and then having a conversation with them. Um, so I think more people in general now in, in, in life are more savvy when it comes to their rights and, uh, and also having reviews. You know, people can find out about you before they deal with you. Mm-hmm. So I think people are more informed now about you know, how things work and they're not willing to be pushed into things anymore. Um, you know, the old school way of selling, uh, like the old kind of traditional way of doing it, where you're trying to close people into something. Um, those tactics don't work anymore. And, you know, and for good reason, um, because it's really about trying to add value to them first and giving them, helping them solve problems first and foremost. But natural selling really is about questioning and making them question themselves and what they're doing. So they come to the conclusion themselves that what you've got to offer and your solution actually is the right one for them. Um, so we do that by, you know, asking them about what they're doing now and how, you know, you know, what are the results you're getting at the moment doing what you're doing? How is that working out for you? Those kind of questions and, and really getting them to think about um, why, why, you know, why they aren't getting the results they want from, from the way that they're doing things at the moment. 
um, you know, and asking things about their life. You know, we, you know, when we speak to clients, we talk about their, you know, their personal life and, and what their goals are. Uh, you know, what their what their um, what their goals are in terms of in- income level and lifestyle and family. We get them to talk about that kind of stuff because, you know, that's important. You know, it's about the, what's the end goal for you. Mm-hmm. you know, everyone, everyone wants to make money. Everyone wants to be successful. But what's the reason behind all of that? So a lot of the questions we ask are about about that sort of stuff. You know, what's the end goal? Is it a legacy that you're trying to achieve here? Is it is it money first and foremost? And get them to be honest about what their motivations are. Because, you know, every, every individual is very different in what's motivating them. Sometimes it is money, um, but other times it's more about impact and making a difference. You know, and we, so we, the questions we ask are more about bringing those things to the surface and making them realize themselves, actually, that's what's, that's what's motivating me. That's really what I want. Mm. And then they start to fit together what they need to do to get to, get, to achieve those things. Um, so our approach is very much um, not at all a sales approach. It's not about, you know, when I go into a phone call with somebody, it really, my, the, you know, the kind of thing in my brain isn't about trying to get a sale. It's about, is this person the sort of person that I can work with, you know, and vice versa? Mm-hmm. They have a problem that I can genuinely solve because not everyone I speak to, um, I can help. You know, it depends on their business and them as a person. Right. So it's more about kind of getting to know people, building rapport, asking the right questions, and then seeing if there's a match. And if there's a match, then, of course, you can discuss um, the opportunity. Um, so that's how I teach all of my students is to go into sales, you know, not thinking about sales. Just think about solving problems and helping Sally, basically. Well, and what I like about what you're describing is you've already modeled it for them in the way that you've interacted with them during your conversation with them. So they're seeing it in action before you're asking them to do it with their clients. Is I don't have that right? That's exactly right. And I actually had that conversation yesterday with a, with a, with a, a prospective client who I was on the phone to yesterday and he was kind of talking to asking me about the process that we help them with and you know how you know how we're going to do this for them and I said look the best thing to do is just think back to the experience you've just been through yourself how have you how have you ended up on this phone call with me right now and I made him think I went quiet and let him think about it and he kind of trapped back in his head how he'd found me and and what that interaction was and then how we ended up booking a call and he went through my webinar before he booked a call with me and I said just think back to that and that's exactly what we're going to be doing to help you and the reason you booked a call with me and you're interested in working with me now is because of that experience you've, you've had with me from not knowing who I am on LinkedIn to booking a phone call with me. Um, and then the, and the, the, the kind of penny drops then. They realize that actually it's not rocket science. It's just about building relationships, being genuine, adding value, and then seeing if there's a match. Simple as that. Well, I just love that. For one thing, there's no pressure you know, Mm. on either party. So you can both just relax and enjoy having a conversation, which, you know, it it just, it just has a whole different feel to it when you take that approach. It's more to do with your expectation. Um, You know, if you're going into, I mean, a lot of people, when they start, coaches that start in business, they are most of the time, you know, looking for cash. They need cash flow. Mm -hmm. So it depends on your predicament. But if you are desperate for cash to pay the bills every month, then you are in a very different place in your brain when it comes to having these types of conversations. So if you let money kind of lead your conversation and always be thinking, I need a sale, I need a sale to pay the bills, then of course that just takes away all the kind of genuineness to the call. Um, it means you're yeah. not adding enough value to them. You're just thinking about you and serving yourself. And when you remove yourself from the, the equation and just think about them on that call and how can I add value to them right now, regardless of whether we work together or not, you know, and I set those boundaries up right at the beginning of the call, I will say, this is not a sales call. Genuinely, this is not a call for me to sell you anything. It's to really work out, you know, more about you, more about your business and what you do to see if I can actually add value to on this call. So you can walk away from this call with some actionable things that will make a difference to your business. Whether you decide to work with us or not doesn't matter to me because I've got plenty of other people that will work with me. It's fine. So I take the pressure away from them straight away. Mm -hmm. That opens up the conversation from the start because they feel the pressure taken away from them. So, yeah. Yeah, that's huge. Well, I would love for you to talk about what um, 
is you might refer to as the traditional or older way of you know putting these pieces in place to slowly build up a relationship versus the simplicity of your approach with just a few steps yeah that's again a great question so i mean what's being taught gen generally out there online from most kind of big gurus out there online marketing gurus is that you need to be constantly creating content and although content creation and a content kind of approach organic approach it does work There's, you know absolutely no doubt i mean you know i'm sure you know gary v everyone knows gary v you know he built he's built his business around a content plan um and he's very clever and he's very good at doing that um but the issue i have with con with with a, with a content strategy is that number one it's very time consuming it's it, it's you know, it kind of drains resources and energy because you feel constant pressure to be creating content. And really that's kind of a long-term approach. Um, and ultimately with these kind of upsells and down, you know, I'm sure you're aware of upsells and downsells and these funnels that sell you an ebook. Oh yeah. And then they try and sell you something for $97. And, and, and the issue with that is that really no one's benefiting from that. You know, you're not actually serving the client. You're not solving the problem. All you do is delaying it. You're delaying actually giving them the solution. So number one, from a business point of view, all you're doing is kind of uh, making a little bit of money, but probably actually not making any, any profit. So from a profit point of view, you're not, you're, you're, it's very minimal. But, but the worst thing about it is that you are wasting that, that prospective client's time by, by taking them through these, all these different funnels. So, so our approach is very much about solving the problem in one, with one solution. So it's not about having upsells and downsells. We have one offer, one program with one price, that we are constantly improving and working on to solve our customers' problem as quickly as possible. Okay, so that might be that you are, maybe if you're a health coach and you help people with diabetes, for example, you know, you're, 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 the, the kind of transformation they're looking for is they want to relieve symptoms of diabetes or get rid of diabetes. So by giving them an ebook on, on maybe diet or a few things that they can do, that's just going to solve a little bit of the problem. It's not going to get them to where they want to be. So it'd be much better from, from, from the coach's point of view to create a three-month or a six-month program working with them that actually really genuinely helps them relieve the symptoms or get rid of diabetes altogether. Um, and that's why I've created my program in a way that it's really is an end-to-end -end solution. So rather than just saying, I'll teach you Facebook ads or I'll show you how to use LinkedIn or I'll build a funnel for you, we've created the whole process start to finish because I, I know what's required to get the result. I've, I've tried to do every piece of this puzzle um, and realize actually if you, don't, if you have one piece missing or a couple of pieces missing, the whole thing doesn't work. But it, you know, if you can go out to someone and say, I can, you know, this is your problem, I'm able to solve it, um, let's get on a call and talk about it, and then you've got a program that will solve that problem, people will be willing to pay thousands of dollars for that because at the end of the day, they just want a result. They want to improve their life. And if you can do that within a two-month program uh, with one with one service, one coaching program, that's all you need. Um, you don't need lots of upsells and eBooks to do, to do that. Oh, I just, yeah, that's so important because we can get caught up with that pressure. One mm. of the things I like about your approach is you have the one webinar that you offer, but you also have created a lot of short videos yeah. uh, in your car where you are, you know, kind of sharing a lesson or an insight. And so yeah. you're able to do those very quickly. They're not requiring a huge investment of time, but they're still giving a lot of value to somebody, somebody that may visit your website to find out more about yeah. who you are. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely worth talking about that because it's, it's a good point. And I actually had a client, a recent client who came on board. And when she did, she said, she said, I've been through your webinar and I love the fact that you just have one offer and it's a high ticket offer and it solves the problem. And you talk about content marketing being you know, sort of avoiding content marketing. She says, but I see you doing content marketing. You're doing videos and you're, you're creating content. So you're kind of contradicting yourself. Um, and it's a really good point. She's the first person that's ever brought it up with me and said and, and caught me out on that, really. Um, but my answer to that is that it really depends on what the big picture is that you're trying to achieve. Um, if you're looking to build a business um, that brings in cash flow in, uh, in, in a pretty timely manner where you don't have to draw it out and rely on word of mouth, then the kind of process, the system that we teach and implement for our clients is a, is the, is a, is a shortcut to that. 
because we're taking someone from a click on Facebook or LinkedIn to becoming a high paying client generally between 24 and 48 hours. Um, but I'm also in the background um, in parallel to that. I'm also creating some content. So I've got a library of content which builds me as a brand because I'm trying to build myself as a brand as well as a, as a kind of a leader in my industry, mm-hmm. which is a separate agenda to, 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 the, to the building the business quickly and bringing right. money to the business. So I don't discourage people to create content. You know, the more, the more videos you do, the more you put yourself on camera, the more genuine you are in helping people solve problems, the more successful you're going to be long term. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm really trying to say is, is that if you, that's not, you, you don't need to do it that way. You can get faster results by uh, doing it the way that we do it, which is you know, straight to a webinar, straight to a phone call. Um, and I think what really you're talking about is having a strategy and yeah. being, you know, having the big picture to say there's a purpose for me doing this. Mm. Uh, like there is with your short videos that has a specific purpose yeah. it's not part of the overall other strategy so i think that's the key is sometimes and i know i've been guilty of it over the years this shiny object comes by mm-hmm. <laughs> and we go oh i need to be doing that yeah and we don't think about all right but how does that fit in with all the other things i'm already committed to doing so uh, that i'm really making the best use of my time yeah and you know, and in the first kind of four to six weeks of our program, we we we, we kind of work heavily on well, the first couple of weeks really, we work very heavily on strategy and a plan because you know you, you would be amazed to know how many coaches, even fairly successful um, business owners, don't don't really know what their plan is. That you know, even down to what number they want to get to. So the first question we ask a client is, how much do you want to earn in the next twelve months? You know, and and, and they always go quiet. And they can't give me a number. They don't know what that number is. And if you don't know that number, how could you ever possibly reach it? Because you, you, you can't make a plan to get there. So, so the first question we ask is, what do you want to earn in the next 12 months? If they say 200,000, then we know, we know then we've got something to work, work with. So what we, what we have is we, we call it our reverse funnel. So it starts with the number, what's the annual number. And then we work and we slot in the pieces to the funnel that we know we need in there to reach those goals. Um, So rather than just doing ad hoc, putting things out there randomly and not really knowing what the destination is for it, which is what most people are doing, we have a very strategic plan working backwards from that number and then we know what what type of product we need to sell, We we know how much we need to sell it for, we know how many of those particular things we need to sell each month to reach that, that financial goal. So everything we do is very much thought out and it's a strategy rather than just ad hoc winging mm-hmm. it. That's great. Well, one last thing, because I know we're running um, out, out of time. Could you give me one example of a client you've helped where they came to you in a tough place and you really helped them transform yeah. their business? Yeah. Well, I've actually got a couple of, of clients, but I think I will talk about BJ. I've got this amazing client called BJ. We've just finished working with her now. We've been working with her probably five months, actually. We, we, we went over the four-month um, program uh, with her because we had such a great relationship and she was doing so well. But BJ, um, just to give you a little bit of a story on her, she worked in corporate for 20 years. So she worked for Apple. Uh, she was a senior executive for Apple, um, a senior executive for Victoria's Secret. Um, so she worked for two or three really big businesses and she was C level. So she was earned a lot of money, very successful. Um, and she got to a point, uh, I think it was about two years ago where she just absolutely felt burnt out. She just couldn't bring herself to be part of the corporate world anymore. She was just, she lost ambition, lost every, lost focus. And she literally had to walk away from it. Um, so she, although she had a lot of experience and great things, you know, she'd done a lot of great things in her career. She was pretty clueless when it came to sales and marketing because that wasn't her thing. So she she found me, I think, on Facebook and we had a conversation and she decided to come and work with us. And what we did was really leverage her background, leverage Apple and all these other names that that she'd had, that she'd worked for. Um, And what she wanted to do is work with women who were looking to do a similar thing to her, so transition away from a successful corporate career and kind of find more meaning and, and find, you know, and just have a bigger impact, really. So we basically packaged her up into, uh, and we helped to create a coaching program helping women in the, in the 50s and 60s coming towards the end of the career who wanted to transition. 
Um, and we created this funnel. We created everything that we do uh, as usual, and uh, and she got amazing results. I mean, I think in the first month we got her refer- her first client. So I think she had a three thousand dollar client in the first month. Um, so what we've done after that point really is leverage that leverage that success, um, and we've just built on that. And we've really got into we've, we've used Facebook for all of this for her. Um, but we've been able to use her back her backstory and all her amazing experience to um, to position her. Um, as someone that can help other women uh, and she's had great success I think she's doing about 15 twenty thousand a month now uh, through through that with one-to-one coaching um, and we're now actually going to start working with her on the bigger picture we're going to try and help her get more speaking gigs uh, so that she can go into uh, possibly law firms we're going to get her into law firms um, get her speaking on stage so she can get pick up clients that way as well so yeah. she's been an amazing person to work with so, That's great. Uh, what we would call your ideal client, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I always say, to, I always said to BJ right from the start, you are my perfect avatar. You know, we we talked about avatar, and I said, if I had to write down my perfect customer, you would you tick every box basically. So, um, I think the great thing about having someone like that, it, all you need is one perfect client to then have a have a, a framework and a blueprint to who you want to go and find more people yeah. like that. So that's great. Yeah. Well, I know that folks listening to this are eager to learn more about you, Sam. How mm-hmm. can they connect with you online and learn more about your services? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm fairly active on LinkedIn. So uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. It's obviously, Sam Hutchinson, you can do a search for me there. Uh, come and connect with me there. I do have a group on LinkedIn. It's quite an intimate, invite only group that I, I, that I have on LinkedIn. About 400 people in there. Um, all of them are invited by me. Um, it's all experts and coaches in lots of different niches. So it'd be great to come and join, come and join us there. Um, so if you reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, my main website is hutchinsonmarketing.com. Um, you can learn more about what we're doing and, and some of the other content as well in there. Um, but we also have our free training workshop, which is the um, which is basically a 30 minute piece of training where we explain in detail exactly how we help our clients and why content marketing isn't the way forward and, and how you can kind of speed up that process. So I do recommend going through our 30-minute our workshop, uh, which you can get on the website. Um, you can also contact us there, book a call with us if you want to speak to us anytime. That's great. And I will um, include those social uh, platform links as well as your website. Say the name of your website again. So, so it's Hutchinson Marketing. So H-U-T- Hutchinson Marketing. Mm-hmm. Hutchinson okay. Marketing.com. Yeah. And we'll include that. Well, Sam, you've given so much valuable information today. It's been such a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for being my guest. Thank you so much, Meredith. It's been so good speaking to you. Thanks for tuning in to the Strong for Performance podcast. Now head over to growstrongleaders.com to learn how our tools can increase your impact with clients and expand your business. And while you're there, grab our free ebook, The Five Secrets to Getting Better at Anything. Until next time, I'm Meredith Bell. Make it a great day.